All right, for multiple people, there's actually supposed to be like a Five Nights at Freddy's Scare the hell out of you. This is a walk-on right now. Okay, guys, we're back at Universal Studios Orlando. It's time for a Halloween Horror Nights 2024 update. So we're talking about some of the rumors, the speculation, the houses, what's going on with the Five Nights at Freddy's rumors, uh, also HHN Vegas and some other stuff, and who might be the icon. Time for the HHN shirt of the day. First off, we got the HHN hat of the day, Halloween Horror Nights 13, 2003, and also the shirt, you know, we got the director right there, the bloody 13. So on that note, let's roll the commercial. Okay, welcome back. We're gonna go to the Coconut Club real quick. We got one more drink to try. We're gonna head back in and you know talk more about the houses and try some other food and there's tribute store stuff. There's a lot happening. So, uh, so we're here at Revenge of the Dead Coconut Club. We have one more drink to try. American Sirens are about to come on stage. Let's get our drink and then we'll talk about Vegas. What's happening with HHN Vegas? Revenge of the Dead Coconut Club. Roll camera. Rolling Galaxy Gals. Scene one, take one. Uh, action! Okay, so we've had all the alcoholic drinks, now it's time to have the mocktail. So it's gonna be the spirit-free slime, lime juice, lemon bean, kiwi, honeydew syrup with tonic water. Yeah, okay. It's very heavy on the tonic water. Makes you want to gag a little bit. If it was replaced with Sprite, it would kind of add this like little kick to it, but it just feels like I'm drinking kind of flavored tonic water. We're doing five out of 10 on the mocktail. So now it's time to talk about Halloween Horror Nights Vegas, or the new name that they officially announced for it. Universal Whore Unleashed. Oh, the whore. Universal Horror Unleashed, coming to Las Vegas, will be the name of the company's first ever year-round horror experience. Universal also released more information about Vegas. Okay, so this is the official statement from Universal Studios about the Vegas attraction. It says, as soon as September rolls up on the calendar, horror fans know that it's officially Universal Hollywood and Universal Studios Orlando Halloween Horror Nights time. The annual two month long celebration of the scary season features IP centric haunted houses, scare zones, and live entertainment events scattered throughout both theme parks. The once all Hallows Eve week arrives, the pumpkins get snuffed out, and the horrifying thrills slink back into the shadows for another year. But what if it didn't? With the ever rising popularity of Halloween Horror Nights at both theme parks, Universal destination and experiences, giving horror fans more of what they want by turning HHN into a year-long destination in Las Vegas with the newly christened name Universal Horror Unleashed. Then they say, what to expect from Universal Horror Unleashed in Las Vegas? The brand new experimental attraction will be located in Las Vegas as part of Area 15, an immersive entertainment district. Per Universal Destinations and Experiences, the 20-acre area will feature a variety of unique, immersive, and horror-centric experiences will surround eerie eateries and bone-chilling bar areas. Unlike the annual HHN haunted houses and themed regions, Universal Horror Unleashed will be unique in that it will be continuously updated experience with must-see seasonal events and one-of-a-kind merchandise. With the announcement of the official name today, Paige Thomas, president New Ventures, Universal Destinations and Experience said, Universal Horror Unleashed, another way we are using our unique style of horror storytelling to engage fans of this genre. We look forward to bringing frightful fun to Las Vegas year round. Then they say, while none of the venture's core attractions have been announced yet, guests can expect to see representation from Universal's long list modern and classic horror properties from Universal Monsters to current hits like Chucky, Purge, Nope, and more. As construction and development progress, Universal destinations and experiences promise updates about what will be inside from the IP featured to the food, drink, and merchandise that will be exclusive to the venue. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack there. It sounds like uh, we're gonna be getting 
a classic Universal Monsters haunted experience house within there with then probably a bunch of rotating IPs probably every year. And then special food and merchandise. A lot of people were thinking it's coming in 2024, it's not. It's coming, I believe, late summer, early fall 2025. That is when uh, HHN Vegas will be opening. So they're gonna have like a tribute store in there. Then they're gonna have like a restaurant and a bar and then several little haunted attractions within there. We don't officially know what haunted attractions are in there yet. The teams are still working on it and planning it and figuring it all out. Probably next year we'll have more information about what's actually happening within the building. Um, I think they just broke ground on it. So then on Twitter, Crystal and Chris uh, posted some photos of the construction updates in Vegas. It looks like they've broken ground and they're starting to set up walls, but they still have a long way to go, it looks like. Yeah, 2025. So on that note, uh, let's go back into the park. All right, there's only gonna be four more nights left. Today is Halloween. Everybody's kind of dressed up in costumes, right? To have a true Halloween Horror Nights night, right? You gotta come on Halloween. All right, the little bracelet trade, we got a Dark Zodiac one. The next scares the recovery is going to be the Dark Zodiac Scare Zone. Right, so the Dark Zodiac is going to be Dr. Oddfellow has entered a dark dimension to harness power of the Zodiac and live forever. He twists the sign into malevolent beings who foretell your doom as his star rises. Yours fall. As you know, Dr. Oddfellow gets the crystal skull, right, for the Cane of Souls, and then he's able to enter into the Dark Zodiac realm where he kind of helps harness that power to live forever. At the end of Dr. Oddfellow's Twist of Origins, you die, and then you go into the Dark Zodiac realm. Uh, so that's going to be this realm. And then also after Jack kills Dr. Oddfellow, Oddfellow goes into the Dark Zodiac realm. Because he's so powerful, that's how he's able to come back. Jack does not know Oddfellow is alive, and then Oddfellow does not know Jack is alive. Let's head into the tribute store. Okay, now I was told there's a rat in each one of the tribute store rooms, and also in the final room, there's four rats. So in the first room, the rat is gonna be over here, right up there. So that's one down, three more to find, and then there's four in the final room. So let's go over to Boris's office, and uh, we'll talk about who the icon next year is probably gonna be. As you know, Universal always kind of listens to what how the fans feel about certain characters, and then they kind of become icons, right? Like the Pumpkin Lord. So they really went hard with Boris this year. The one thing that was kind of a very telling tale, the creative team was doing an interview for like the Blumfest. Mike was talking about who icons were, and he was like, Boris is an icon. It only makes sense that next year, that Boris is the icon. So I think each one of the scare zones will probably be a different case of Boris, and then Boris will be the overarching icon, right? Bring back all the storytelling with the legendary truth. There's too much rich storytelling happening within the little room. It all points to that. As you know, they plan this year out, right? They put little uh, breadcrumbs, little Easter eggs for us to find to figure out what's happening next year. And that is the one Easter egg that has been popping up everywhere. You're in the Coconut Club, right? You'll spot this. Then in the front, right? Got all the comics for uh, Case File. Come in here, the whole second room is all Boris. And then they add the letter here, right? Connecting to Bloody Mary from 2008. There's no other Easter eggs that point to anything else. And then the next rat in room number two is gonna be right up here next to the pumpkin. So then on the final portion of the comic, right? It says to be continued. To be continued, right? Next year, probably. They probably will probably do another comic, right? Because the comic sold extremely well. I hope they do another comic. To be continue again leading into next year that's what i'm thinking third room 
The little rat's gonna be right up there when you first walk in. It's so hidden, but I spot him. All right, number one in the room is gonna be right down here underneath the little pumpkin pail. The little rat is gonna be hidden. They did not have to do details like this, but they did. Um, the rat is like chewing and gnawing through the box. There's gonna be one right up here. And right before you get in the queue, it's gonna be hidden right over there. Okay, so now we have three down, one more to go. I've invested probably over an hour into this little journey and scavenger hunt, because I'm gonna show you guys every Easter egg. Um, I cannot find the last one. Where is it? We've been informed there's not four rats in the final room. That rat has them move to room number two. So there's two rats in room number two. People just hit some art. This is disturbing. Yeah. Wait, got key. It's like a demonic the balloon, Mickey. The balloon says, fear me. What in the world? Where, what does it say at the top? Worship me, for I am the divine. We cannot find it. I really just hope there's a picture of just six nine someplace in the room and that's the rat. The final rat has been found. This might have been the hardest one of the entire scavenger hunt. It's hidden on like the stair. It blends in perfectly with the rain and the paint job. Nearly impossible, but we found it. We've now found every single rat within the Tribune store. Well, I know you're great at spear, so I made you a no bitters bracelet. It literally says, no bitters on it. The Megans are here. Right, we are back at the Peacock Halloween Whore Bar. If you guys haven't seen the first two drinks that I had here, that's an upcoming video. This is the last drink that I have to try for all of HHS. I gotta ask, it's the final drink. What do you think my rating is gonna be on this? This Ooh. one does have bitters in it. We're looking at a solid 4.275. If it has bitters, I'm gonna go with two out of 10. All right, what concoction did Bitters Boy come up with now? So we've done these two. You'll see coming up. The last one we gotta do. I didn't even bring my Blinky Blink cup because these drinks do not deserve to be in the Blinky Blink cup. Final drink. Uh, the bartender just looked at me and laughed when I was ordering it because they, they know what's coming. So we got the Peacock Tail, Old Smoky White Lightning, Caravella Lemoncello, Liqueur Stegra, Lemon Juice, Lemon Bitters, Blackberry, and Simple Syrup. <sighs> We all know how everybody feels about these drinks. The bartenders are sick of having to remake these drinks and having to refund people. The annual pass holders are sick of wasting all their time and money on these terrible drinks. This guy who designs these drinks has a 20% success rate. I'm dumbfounded. This has gone on for this long. I know the guy's working on the Epic Universe drinks right now, which is very worrying. You go to Disney, I don't think I've ever returned a drink or had a bad drink at Disney. At Universal, I would say 85% of the time, it's a bad drink. This is another bad drink. Lemon pea cocktail just tastes like Frankenberry dingleberries and you mix it with white lightning and that's what you're getting in this cup you know like the great push pop if somebody just like let that chill out in some alleyway mix it with some pond water that's what this is i'm just i'm done i spent a lot of money to review these for you guys i'm just getting so sick of every single one being bad the man is just throwing darts at the wall just adding ingredients for no reason i got the plot for saw 11 now force people to drink these drinks oh my god oh my god there he is there he is <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, there he is. What's my name? <laughs> David Pumpkins. Happy Halloween. I'm David Pumpkins. You are. And I'm going to scare the hell out of you. I cannot wait, David, as Pumpkins. Any questions? You're the best, and happy Halloween. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's it hanging? <laughs> Going great. Can I get a picture? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did not know they had a Jurassic Park uh, meet and greet over here in Universal. So we got to get some more little snacks to try here at Kids Zone Pizza Company. We all know pizza fries are amazing, but how do their stepbrothers taste? Uh, these are going to be these sweet potato s'mores fries. Potato fries topped with marshmallow, graham crackers, white and milk chocolate chips. Same as last year. 7 out of 10. All the wait times are extremely low on Halloween. The vibe in the park is incredible. It's just all like the hardcore AJ Gen fans here tonight. Scare actors are loving it. It's a very like special day being here on Halloween for Halloween Horror Nights. So if you've never done that, I highly suggest doing it next year. <laughs> And we're heading back to the Day of the Dead food booth. I gotta try the Walk and Taco again. It was so good during Taste of Terror. I would say the vegan one was amazing. So I'm gonna get the vegan one again. All right, so we got the vegan Walk and Taco. It's gonna be Fritos chip topped with a vegan chorizo, vegan shredded mozzarella, black beans, roasted corn salsa, pico de gallo, vegan sour cream with shredded lettuce. Now Taste of Terror, this thing did not taste like, you know, like a vegan dish. There's so much in there. 
It's like a whole meal. But do like 8.5. Now this is why you should come on a Halloween. Stranger Things is only a 60 minute wait. Dueling Dragons is a 35 minute wait. Yeti is a 25 minute wait. These are some great wait times. Uh, we're about to do Blood Moon right now. It said it was a 35 minute wait. Uh, it is a walk on right now. Now there's zero wait for the Carnival dog right now. Happy Halloween. Thank you so much for being here. Now let's go back to the family room and talk about what's coming probably for next year. Okay guys, we're back in the office. Wasn't that a sweet little throwback? We have a bunch of other like videos that are filmed during HHN which will then be intertwined with the HHN update stuff. So don't worry, your HHN like actual coverage is not gonna be ending. Let's talk about the big elephant in the room right now, Five Nights at Freddy's. Is it coming? Is it not? There's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes. First off, we're gonna be talking about kind of the information that is out there and the clues. Then we'll be connecting it to kind of like what I know. So first off, we gotta go to Twitter about all of Murdy's tweets because they all kind of interconnect with everything. Okay, so John Murray tweeted this. Well, boils and ghouls, I've only got three more nights of HHN before I have to fly back to Ireland, HHN Europe, HQ, and begin writing HHN 2024. Again, this is a tweet from last year. It'll all kind of interconnect. Um, I'll be back for the final week in October, but need to bang out a couple of treatments between now and then, one original and one IP. And then we go to another tweet with Murdy saying, heading off to a super secret location for a super secret meeting with a super secret person about a super secret property for 2024, dot, dot, dot. Sorry, I'd love to tell you, but it's super secret. Then let's talk about Five Nights at Freddy's. So Universal released this, and they also said at the bottom, in addition to the film, Freddy Fazbear and the characters of Five Nights at Freddy's will be brought to life at Universal Studios Hollywood Halloween Horror Nights. Brought to life is very different than just having statues of and the props of them in the Blumhouse experience at Hollywood. So brought to life means actually moving around. So last year for HHN, Five Nights at Freddy's was actually supposed to have a bigger presence than just kind of being posters and everything. I heard for multiple people, there's actually supposed to be like a Five Nights at Freddy's meet and greet that's supposed to happen over by the Peacock Bar. There's also supposed to be like drinks. They're supposed to be themed to Five Nights at Freddy's. I believe it was all supposed to drop when the film released on Peacock to kind of help promote the film with Peacock, but something happened behind the scenes. So we never got a character meet and greet. So there was supposed to be a bigger presence with Freddy last year at HHN. Blumhouse and HHN have kind of already been in talks for Five Nights at Freddy's. So now let's cut to more tweets. So Jason Blum, the head guy over at Blumhouse, saw some old friends last night. And then there's also the props from Five Nights at Freddy's right there. And then we're gonna cut to a tweet from John Murdy. Ran into my old friend, Jason Blum at HHN opening night. Thanks for hooking us up with a treasure trove of film assets from Blumhouse behind the screens. Always a pleasure to work with you and the team at Blumhouse. And what did John Murdy talk about in the tweets before he was going to visit a secret friend in a secret location at Jason Blum, California. So then what does that mean for Halloween Horror Nights 2024? Now last year, again, when we filmed this video, I was hearing they were actively working on a house for Five Nights at Freddy's. And then also hearing stuff this year that they were actively working on a house for Five Nights at Freddy's. A couple weeks ago, there was a bunch of rumors that came out that Five Nights at Freddy's is not coming to HHN this year for Orlando or Hollywood. I think it still could come in some capacity. Universal also loves to kind of like throw out these misleading uh, hints and details to people to kind of confuse everyone. So I know it was being worked on. I don't know if it's going to end up at HHN this year. If it does not, I have a feeling it's going to be going to Vegas because a Blumhouse property is going to be one of the houses at HHN Vegas. So I could see them saving this house, putting it in Vegas to really draw people into that location, which will be coming out next year. But there still is a chance for Five Nights at Freddy's to come to HHN this year. I don't want you to give up hope. I still believe there's a chance that Five Nights at Freddy's still could be coming. So one of the reasons why people think Five Nights at Freddy's is not coming to Halloween Hornets this year is because the creator, he's very um, kind of controlling with the property, but there is already a Five Nights at Freddy's haunted house out in Saudi Arabia. We went to the real life Five Nights at Freddy's in Saudi Arabia. In honor of the movie coming out, the boulevard in Riyadh decided to make a haunted house based off of that. And here's us going through it. Yo, Freddy. Oh, no. The means are gonna come after us right now. Just, Meets, no, okay, but just, like, excuse them. Wait, everyone see the song. Yo. Yo, wait, why are so many boxes? Oh, no. Chica? Get it. Ah! 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 The part of 87!
Oh, okay. Only time will tell is if we get Five Nights at Freddy's at HHN. Again, we're still so early in the season. Things change, right? Stuff that's designed for this year can get changed last minute, like a couple weeks out, or it can be changed last year. So on that note, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. If you have not already, hit the subscribe button. Join the family. I love the family! Because I'm going to keep you up to date on all things Halloween Horror Nights and Universal Studios around the country. I love you all, and I'll see y'all very soon. I'm David Pumpkins. And it's just that it has a flavor of like cooterade. And then it's, I don't know, I detect like perfume.